Uh oh, bad news for Chris Brown fans. Bad news for Chris Brown fans. Chris Brown's domestic violence documentary announced by Quiet On Set Network ID as new accusers come forward. I felt like in the last few years, Chris Brown has, especially in the last few years specifically, he's really moved past that whole Rihanna episode. Because I feel like, although he's had other instances of domestic violence and what you would deem to be like aggressive behavior against women, you know, after Rihanna, I feel like the Rihanna thing has finally kind of like left him now that he's in this period of his career. I feel like, I, I don't know why, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe because I'm a fan of his music. Maybe because I keep an eye on his live shows and I've seen some of his followers on social. But I feel like now there's less of a conversation around Chris Brown being an abuser. But this is probably the worst timing possible. Because just as people are starting to like, I won't say forget, but kind of move past it. Now this documentary comes up to drudge up all the old stuff and to probably announce new accusers as well. You're probably going to say some not so nice things about him, which is wild. And, you know, even if you're a fan of Chris Brown, you can't say this isn't true because him as a person, he is kind of um, hyper. Uh, he is maybe sometimes aggressive and very bossy. And we've also known, unfortunately, since his time with Rihanna, he has got into a lot of um, unpleasant exchanges with women, online, offline, whatever. We've seen it. So this does seem to be somewhat believable. And like I said before, it's the worst timing ever, literally. Um, I think he just went on tour as well recently. That sold out. He did really well there. He's been putting out a few albums that people have been loving. You know, usually 100 tracks each, but still people like them. So if ever there was worse timing, this would be it. But I guess if you're a victim of his, you're probably going to think this is great timing because people are going to finally hear your story. Let's scroll down. Chris Brown's legal troubles and history of abuse is the subject of a new documentary from the investigative the investigation discovery, the network behind the Nickelodeon child abuse expose quiet on set. Out on October 27th, Chris Brown, a history of violence. Wow. It's called Chris Brown, a history of violence. <laughs> what a title, bro. They're burying him in it. Chris Brown, a history of violence. Fucking hell. I wonder if they include the Frank Ocean thing in there. I wonder if they'll include the Frank Ocean thing in there. That would be fucking hilarious if they include that in there. Um, we'll launch ID's third annual No Excuses for Abuse campaign. The doc will explore the legal issues faced by Brown, the pop star behind the star song such as With You Forever, Under the Influence, which include domestic violence and assault charges and sexual assault allegations. Brown's troubles date back to 2009 when he beat up then girlfriend Rihanna, causing several facial injuries that required hospitalization. Brown pleaded guilty for felony assault and set the plea deal. In the years following, Brown pleaded guilty to a separate assault that was sued by a woman alleging sexual assault. The lawsuit settled out of court, along with a variety of other issues. I remember recently seeing, I'm not going to lie, I remember recently seeing the clip, or sorry, the picture of Rihanna, you know, with her injuries and shit. And I don't know why, but it struck me. I was like, raw Ted, bro. He really fucked her up, innit? And that speaks to talent. That speaks to pretty privilege and talent. Because really and truly, if he wasn't as talented and maybe as good looking as he was, as he is, he would never have survived that. That woman looked like she had been like thrown down a set of stairs, bro. And when I was looking at it a bit more closely, I was thinking to myself, you know what those injuries look like? Now that I have more knowledge of like you know now i'm a fan of the ufc and i know what kind of injuries look like and shit that looked like elbows looking at those injuries a lot of that shit looked like elbows i feel so shit so he was sitting in a she's sitting in a passenger seat he's driving left hand left hand drive car right hand dominant maybe maybe he's right-handed imagine if he was just elbowing her in the face super hard while they were arguing in a car because i remember people saying at the time because at the time, that was Rihanna when she was at her most, like, cunty, bossy, sharp. People were saying, oh, yeah, what did she say to him, though, to get him to that level? What did she say? What did she say? But when you look at that picture, even years, even at the time, even now even more so, years past, surely there's nothing someone can say that would get you to that level to hit a woman like that. Because I'm not the, I'm of the Bill Burr side of things. I'm not a believer that there's nothing a woman can do that justifies them getting hit. I think that's stupid. I think obviously anyone could do anything that would make you snap. Um, but I don't think words should get you to that level. I always find it weird how like certain black people are like, oh, when someone says nigger, they like turn into fucking the Incredible Hulk. I always thought that was really strange. 
like one word someone says to you, like, it's like what? Like I don't even, like if someone just screams that to you outside in the car. Is that doesn't mean much? It's just a word, right? But when they say it in context of something else, they're saying cool. There's another issue. So I don't think there's there should be, ever be a thing that someone can say to you that will get you from being like chill to suddenly like smashing the, your elbow into their face while their head bounces off the fucking backseat of a car, off the headrest of a car. It shouldn't happen that way. And that's what you saw with that picture. He's like rotted. And the fact that there was never a corroborating, because I remember a lot of people saying, oh yeah, Rihanna's also kind of like violent. They had a very violent relationship. There was never a tip for tap picture. Because if that was Chris Brown's defense, and that was the case. Imagine they had actually a mutual, a mutual physical relationship, right? If I was Chris Brown's defense, I would have put out his face. I would have put out his fucking, you know, mugshot straight away of his face covered in scratches and bruises too to prove that, oh shit, they were, they were going at it and he just got the better of her. Still, you don't get bonus points for it, but at least... But the fact that it never happened is proof to me that he was wailing out on her too bad and it went that way. And you actually have to give Rayan a lot of credit for forgiving him and moving on. But it also goes to show you how triggering that was because a lot of women have never moved on. Even though Rihanna's clearly moved on and she's forgave him for that. You know, she said it in interviews, they hug publicly. Clearly there's not an issue be be between them. Women have never moved on. A certain portion of women have never moved on from there and I've hated Chris Brown ever since. And some women, I feel like I've doubled down on their love for Chris Brown because I guess that was like the human side of him and maybe a lot of women have maybe been involved in their own domestic violence of abuse. And as we've seen when I was speaking about the Moe Lola and Ian Connor situation, a lot of women, have, a lot of people, let's say women, a lot of people are full of shit. People will say certain things are a red flag, certain things I would not expect from a man, but then in their real life, they accept mad things. So maybe a lot of women that were doubling down and being fans of Chris Brown were like, you know what? This is what regular, this is what guys do. This is what happens in a relationship. So this is not a shock to me. But I think to everybody else that saw those pictures, it's like, fucking hell. She was a, she still is a people's princess, Rihanna. And to see her so fucking battered and bruised, looking like Elephant Man was fucking gnarly. And if I remember correctly as well, is her entire face was evenly covered in bruises. It wasn't like, you know, although that bad bunny, bad baby picture was very distressing the one of her you know alleged baby daddy beating her up with the eyes swollen shot it was just her eyes swollen shot right it was just like you know if you're being a toxic guy and you want to defend that the thing you'd be like oh my i only hit her once in a moment of anger still it's fucking heinous and you should be thrown in the middle of a fucking ditch somewhere but the chris brown thing the why it was really disturbing was like her entire face was evenly covered with bruises and marks and shit he was really going in on her in on her super super hard and you'd imagine a lot of those domestic violence issues like that in other in other walks of life those things end fatally so it's probably by the grace of god that she's still with us at the moment honestly because she looked like she legitimately went you know fucking 10 rounds with fucking john jones it was fucking wild um but yeah chris brown is not gonna be happy about this one i wonder if they can stop this sort of thing i wonder if, if these lawyers will try and stop this um according to the log line Chris Brown, a history of violence, will chart Chris Brown's past and uh, all the way back from his troubled childhood. Explores the lasting impact of cycle of abuse that poses the question, how does a man with such violent public record maintain his superstar status? With expert and cultural commentary layered throughout, the documentary provides thoughtful reflections into each survivor's experience and psychological destruction in the aftermath of their abuse. I don't like this sort of question because what they're essentially posing is why isn't Chris Brown cancelled? And I think a lot of that has to do with these fans. And I'm okay with that. Honestly, I've never been a big fan of like um, societal, industry-wide cancellations. I think that's very evil at its core when a, an entire industry can decide, okay, you don't get a career, you get a career. I think careers in the entertainment industry should be, should be solely the responsibility or the whatever of the fans. The fans should be the one that select, okay, cool, we love your fucking stuff, we're going to back you, you're our person. And then they push you up, and then obviously the industry recognizes you, you get all the awards and shit. But I don't think the industry, production studios, management, I don't think they should decide who has a career who doesn't. No matter how what how deplorable of a person you are, your fans decide. And then when you put the onus on the fans, it puts the mirror in front of their face and says, oh shit, you must be a terrible person if you're championing somebody with these charges on their back. That's what it should be. It shouldn't be about, oh, why are they not cancelled? Why don't they have that? Like, why is the music up on Apple Music? Because if we go if we go down that road of like, oh, we're not going to have abusers on Apple Music, half of the half of your fucking library will be fucking empty. You know, half of your half of the artists that you're into will be fucking gone. 
maybe over half because a lot of artists have some crazy shit in their background crazy shit on their docket crazy shit in their fucking you know records so I, I don't like all that moral grandstanding from the industry and shit the fans should be the ones that should be being questioned which is what they should have probably done with this documentary like actually sitting down with women who maybe suffered domestic violence issues or just women in general who are part of his fan base and asking them like why are you still a fan of this guy when he's done all this shit to women that would usually be a red flag for most women like if if a, if a guy went on one of those shows where the women's have the balloons and he said oh yeah like you know i beat up five of my previous girlfriends they would all pop their fucking balloons but because somebody is a celebrity because maybe there's good looking i don't know they kind of changed their tune i don't know what's going on there but that would be a, a far more interesting conversation to go down but again what do i know um as revealed in a trailer the new accusers whose identity is hidden comes forward allegations against brown i have not spoken out about this matter publicly but this is the only way that it can be stopped jesus christ so this person we have never heard from is going to share their experience with chris brown in this documentary only god almighty immediately following the documentary which airs on october 27th the view co-host sunny houston will lead a conversation about intimate partner violence they're gonna have a, a a discussion about this on the view fucking hell they're really i wonder why they're trying to end him now huh interesting i wonder what's going on here it seems to have come out of nowhere but maybe it's a it's an opportune time given what's happening now in culture maybe they feel like this is the best time to strike while the iron's hot um throughout my career i've always prioritized being a fierce defender of women and children said hoiston as if there's something so noble oh, i'm a fierce defender of women and children congratulations here's a pat on the back here's a fucking gold star these sort of things that people say just to kind of earn social credit points are so bizarre i'm a fierce defender like huh who isn't like <laughs> what hoiston said in the statement domestic violence is a very close and personal issue to me as i affected my past as a prosecutor in the types of cases and in my role as a mother so you've never actually suffered from domestic violence you're a prosecutor that might have had domestic violence cases come across your docket that's why you feel personally attached to it because you're a woman and you're a prosecutor <sighs> all right cool man all right whatever you say um public figure whose actions informed to help shape the next generation the issue of prevalent oh, the issue is a prevalent epidemic which knows no socioeconomic boundaries as i am dedicated to expanding and continuing this crucial conversation the more we know the better we can help advocate for the change in society but we all know it's bad no one's going to change their mind about domestic violence because of a chris brown documentary for good or bad we all know domestic violence is fucking bad it doesn't answer the fucking question these documentaries are again it's just another it's it, like they're trying to hide they're trying to they're trying to act like it's a noble thing but essentially it's just another bit of like bullshit garbage tv do you know what i mean really and truly they're not really trying to help anybody they're trying to get ratings they're trying to make money which is fair but let's not act like you're trying to do something noble and shit let's let's not do that let's not do that because the issue about domestic violence is widespread and you know should be addressed without the need to put in chris brown's name in it there are many victims out there that don't have a famous person beating them up they need help and attention and probably insight and shit people not doing it so let's let's not let's chill with that shit but again what do i know um blah blah, blah. with quiet on set the dark side of kids tv id investigated the alleged child abuse took place behind the scenes of nickelodeon in that doc drake bell revealed himself as the victim of brian peck who was arrested in 2003 for sexual assault in a 15 year old drake and joss next idea released a docu series about sean diddy combs who's recently been charged with sex trafficking cases so they're going through the whole docket of of garbage men um first it was that guy from nickelodeon then it's then it's gonna be chris brown and then fucking diddy that's some that's some companies of being that's a that's a that's horrible companies to be a part of in it diddy and the nickelodeon guy god damn watch the trailer below cool coming out on the 27th keep an eye on it if you're that way inclined if you feel like you're interested in it keep an eye out for it you know where it's gonna be you know where it's gonna be